All right, here we go again at BJ's Custom. Uh, this is the 89 Caprice, as I showed in the previous video. I want to get that license plate. Give you a shot of it. The car. As I showed you in the previous video, this uh, 4.8 right here ended up being a bad motor. Uh, right now, we're going to pull it out. Uh, we're gonna get this one pulled out and once we get it pulled out we're gonna get the cam the oil pump um oil pan a few other goodies that we put in this motor recently and we're gonna pull them out and we're gonna stick them in this this 6.0 block right here it's a 6.0 iron block so we're gonna take all the new stuff that we put in that other motor over there we're gonna put it in this one and then we're gonna go ahead and finish reassembling this motor but i was just giving y'all a shot right now right now we about to pull the motor out motor transmission out together we just getting all of the starter wires the transmission lines all the little stuff that's connected to it we just getting that pulled out right now and uh i'll update y'all later and with another update again it's the 89 caprice this is about 30 minutes later maybe not that long but there it is got that supposedly 5.3 but 4.8 block coming out of there with the transmission gonna go ahead and pull it out i got the transmission draining right now as you can see it's strawberry milkshake all over the ground coolant the radiator was bad and coolant mixed with the uh with the transmission fluid or water or something but that strawberry milkshake as you can see right here you got it draining out in the pan right here cooling all over the ground but it's coming up out of there we're gonna go ahead and pull it out go ahead and get the goodies out of it stick it in this other motor and we're gonna keep moving uh, I'll update y'all in a minute when I got it all the way out. All right, here we go again. B&J's Custom. There it is. Motor is out. Got the exhaust wired up so it don't drag. Got it out. This probably about another 30 minutes later. Had a couple complications with the engine hoist. It's time to put that engine hoist to bed. Put it in the graveyard because it's over with. Oh, it end up hurting somebody out here but there it is just wanted to shoot a little quick video of that um we pulling this out here it is right here along with this strawberry milkshake supposed to be transmission fluid but we're gonna go ahead and flush that transmission that's a 4l60e um here's the block got it up out of there that's a 4.8 see the flat pistons in there like i showed in my last video this is an iron block if it's got flat pistons in it and it's an iron block it's a 4.8 if the pistons are dish 5.3 well here's the motor we are gonna be pulling all the goodies out of it uh if i can get this right the cam the oil pump cam oil pump um, the LS2 time and chain that's in here, that's going to be coming out of it. Um, like I said, the knock sensors that's up in here, that's going to be coming out. And uh, that's pretty much it of this motor, so that's all. And we're going to be putting the transmission on the back of that 6.0. All of the little plugs off of there, so that's why I didn't disconnect the transmission lines. I just left them. Um, but there it is. So I wanted to shoot a little quick video on 2018. I'm trying to at least post one video a week, but that means I'm going to have to do some work. So we'll see how that go. But this here, again, like in the last video, it's the 6.0. Uh, customer bought all new lifters. Uh, we had this block prepped. Um, the crank was grinded down, then polished, so we got new lifters. We're going to pull the cam out of that other motor, which is new. It's a Texas Speed cam. Um, we're going to pull the oil, um, the oil pump out of there. Um, right here, 
as you can see uh, let me get on this side right here you got new cam bearings in there already greased wait uh, like I say, this is the 6.0. We needed to pull that motor out before we could start building this motor because we, need we needed the cam, um, the oil pump, a couple other little key factors we needed. But this is the crankshaft in there, shining like new money. Can you see it turning freely? Already been torqued down, turning freely. Oh, yeah, one thing I want to note out real quick here, too. And I always make this mistake when I do build these LS motors at times. Uh, is just be careful when you build these up, fellas, you know, because like I said, you want to make sure your numbers are all all in order right here. He's widening out the screen so you can see it. So you want to get the one over here, two there, three right here, which is the center. So that's where your thrust bearing is going to go here. Then you got four, and then five is going to go on this end over here. Sometimes sometimes it may be here, but most time it usually be over there. And then sometimes the one may be here, or it may be up top. So just want to just make sure you get these in order right here because it's so easy. And one thing with the LS motor, it'll tell you when you're doing it wrong because if you if you put these in wrong, you try to turn your crank, it won't turn. So like so I always do make that mistake all the time. So and it's always good to go over there. So just like you said, you want this to make sure it turns freely by hand. And uh and just to that. just to kind of reiterate real quick, five goes towards the back. Um I know that sounds like a um a dumb thing to say, but hell, it, it does happen. Yeah. You, can put, oh, yeah. you can put five in the front. Yep. So, <laughs> so I mean, it's not a big deal, but there it is. Six O is upside down, but but it has happened. You can put you can put five in the front and then put the rest of them however you want to put them. But if you don't put them in there right, go back and check it because that crank is gonna be tight. It don't want to turn. You got to lay on it to try to turn that crank. That crank should turn freely by hand, just how you doing it. Yep. And it, these are, these bolts here have already been torqued, and they have already had the 80 degree torque put on them. 80 degree torque on the uh, outers, and then 53 on the inners, as far as degree go, degree go. But otherwise, as far as the torque specs, are 15 foot pounds. Okay, but see, even at, after you torque them and you do all that, it should turn freely by hand. If you got to put a bar on it, if you got to turn it, if you got to do anything but turn it freely by hand. Then you need to go back. You need to check all your caps. Make sure all your your bearing caps are in the right place. You need to make sure all your main caps are in the right place. Cause we have had this problem before, and it took a little while for us to figure it out, but we got it right. And all because of why? Because it was turned inside out. You know, and like I said, you know, we've been building these motors for a little while, and like I said, I do goof up at times when this does happen. But I read I always like to go over this here. Then me putting this motor together and then someone get out there and take it out there and they want to open it up a little bit and then a grenade. So, you know, just important fellas or ladies, if you're doing this thing here, just check your work. You know, that's, and, that's the most important. And on that same note, make sure when you pull your piston caps off, and I know a lot of people know this, but when you pull your piston caps off, make sure you keep them together. Do not separate them because the, when that rod was made, it was one piece. And what happens is to get those rods, to get those rods uh, to work right together, they're broken. So they're actually broken to how they're supposed to be, like like right here. This was one piece when they made when they machined this. It was one piece. So what happens is when they get ready to make the different parts of it, so they, they it, break it. Make it a crack cap design from SGM made them. So and and, and when they break it, you have to make sure you put each one back with the one it came with because if you don't, your crank will not turn. It will not turn. It's going to be hell to turn it. So very important. So make sure you mark them like on the bottom right here. He got. He got uh he got three oh, he got three dots here. God damn it. I mean I can't cuss on YouTube. Turn it around. <laughs> right here, he got three dots there. Then he got it marked again. And then he got three dots there. What is the what's the three dots mean? It don't really mean anything. It's just just really alignment. That's now all. Now you got me lying on YouTube. Nah. He got a mark right here. Number two and number one. He should have marked the caps, number two and number one. Normally, how you do that is, uh, let me let me enlighten Mr. Jones real quick. Normally, how you do that is you take a, um, see, if you put the paint on there and the paint rub off, then what? Oh, this, this is why I wrote this with printed marker, so it don't 
So no, no, paint with that's metal, metal to metal. That paint that will come off. Yeah. But all, all I'm saying is, is that when you put, when you mark those, take a screwdriver, like this screwdriver right here, a number but a Phillips head, and then not on, not on the piston, but like down here on this cap, you can take it and you can make notches. You can make notches. One, one dot two dot hit it with a hammer and mark those or they have stamps that you can buy and you can stamp each piston and each cap and then get it all right but with that, that's just something with that we sharing with y'all everybody do it they different ways and um there's no wrong or right way to do it which there is but you'll find out and it'll cost you out your out of your wallet but um yeah that's all we saying make sure you get these caps right Again, there's the number five. It's at the back. Let's turn in. And you got four right here. You got three. You got two. And then you got one. If you don't get those in the right order, the crank will not turn. And the caps, make sure you keep them together. But that's just a little something we're sharing with y'all. Uh, though, you know, we, we, we telling y'all off mistakes that we didn't make. So, um, we're not talking like experts or nothing. we just telling y'all mistakes we made. So hopefully y'all won't make them same ones when y'all building. Uh, but again, yeah, like I said, it's just a short video I'm showing. I don't want it to be too long, but here it is. Motor again with the strawberry milkshake. And here's the car. I'll uh, be expecting another video of us rebuilding that same 6-0 and then be expecting us putting that 6 back in here within a week two weeks and getting it back running be expecting the colorless 442 right here and another week few days um if you follow me as i hope everybody following me and more people we put the tank up last night uh, I just need to wire that up to the harness on the on the in the front, and uh, that's pretty much it. Um, we also got a bunch of other projects coming. Um, it's possible that I'm gonna do a six two swap in my um um GMC my thirty five hundred my work truck. Um, it's possible we're gonna do a five three swap in Mr. Jones right here uh, suburban. Uh, we we really ready to do those. Uh, this car here, I think we're gonna do a five three swap in it. Mr. Jones, you wanna tell me a little bit about your yeah, five right, so, three? Yeah, a little bit about the five three that's going in my ninety eight Suburban. Uh, it's basically a two thousand five uh, Chevy. Yeah, the motor came out two thousand five Silverado. Uh, it's actually a later model um, Gen three, so it actually has the stronger rods in there. Uh, I did flat top pistons in that one, and uh, I put two forty three heads on it. And I used a two thousand one. Uh, Corvette Z06 cam, which you can't really find those. Those kind of like eyeballs, almost so to speak. But that's what's going there. Just you know, you know, it's not no power horse. It's not no race truck by any means. So it's just really my gross together. You know, just something with a little more power, better reliability, and most importantly. All right. Well, yeah, we was just uh telling you about a couple other projects we got going on. We do have more projects. Um, I just uh we not sure what what direction we are going with all of them right now. We we'll like again, we like to say we appreciate the support. Everybody watching the videos and uh, share this video. Share it to your friends that like cars. Share it to your friends that don't like cars. I just need some more likes and some more subscribers. You know what I'm saying? But uh, again, I uh, appreciate the support. We got a uh, few other cars coming. We are going to be at the car show in uh, March 31st. We're going to be down in Gillum, Louisiana. Uh, I'm actually from Shreveport. Um, Halden, Louisiana. So uh, we're gonna be down there at the first annual car show down there in uh, Gillum on the 31st. If you ain't got nothing going on, come on down there, check us out. We're gonna have uh, I'm getting some t-shirts made up right now by uh, Mr. Aubrey Smith. He gonna be uh, uh, getting me some t-shirts made up, some flyers and stuff. Uh, um, if you're interested in getting some t-shirts made or anything like that, let me know and I'll link you up with him so you can get that done. Get some design set up. Uh, you know, he do all that T-shirts, mugs, um, all that stuff there. So, um, um, I guess that's it. Um, me and Jay's custom. Appreciate y'all for watching. Thanks a lot.